welcome back to another day in the bay. It's a bit of a different one this time uh, because I'm on my own. I mean, Patrick's here. We've got the Jag in. Um, this is from the players guys who are going to be at Ultimate Dubs this weekend. Um, so normally we get a car in from them um, so we can prep it for them. Um, especially if they've got the play bay down at their unit. Um, if that's particularly busy, then we, we help out and we detail the cars for them. So we've got their recently bagged Jag. Um, and here's awesome old paint. Um, it's a uh, it's just come from Car Audio Security who have um, put it on a fresh set of wheels and bagged it uh, for the players guys so it was a nice transition from going from there to here to get nicely detailed so it's nice and fresh for the show. This is going to be a real proper swell removal gloss enhancement video. So we're going to be going through clay barring, ultimate compound, polishing and the hand waxing. So like we explained earlier, this is coming for some proper show prep. Now, as you can see, the paint is old. It's also very heavily swelled. It's got scratches, it's got marks, it's got stains. So we can really go to town on this one. And like I say, this is a bit different from a normal Dana Bay video, as in the owner's not here. But that's fine. You know, come the show season, you're gonna probably be seeing more of these when we get people drop the car off. Um, especially people we have good relationships with, you know, the players guys, we've been working with them for many, many years. Um, as well as us, they're, they're building a new YouTube channel as well, so if you can check that out, I'm sure there'll be some great content on there as well. So, the car has been cleaned, it's been washed and dried uh, before coming into the bay, so it means I can crack straight on with the clay barring. Now, as we've mentioned earlier, in previous videos, clay bar will not do anything to change the look of this paint, but it'll change how it feels. Now, you can hear, you can hear there's contaminants sitting on the surface of the paint, so that's when we want to use our clay bar. I'm going to use a quick detailer, get the surface nice and lubricated. And if you want as well, spray the clay as well. All I'm going to do is my up and down and my left and right motions. So I'm not going to go in circles because it's too random, I could miss areas. So what I'm going to do is just go in nice straight lines. I can clearly see where I've been. And it's just a nice even distribution of the clay. Also, you notice I'm just using fingertip pressure only. That's because you don't need to press down on the paint. All you need is a gentle motion just to gently remove those contaminants. Now the reason this is so important um, to clay bar before machine polishing or any kind of correction on the paint is because if there is contaminants sitting on the paint, if you go straight in and machine polish that or hand polish it, you're gonna grind that contaminant into the paint. So removing that is gonna give you a better finish. It's gonna feel loads better as well. All you need to do is take a Supreme Shine microfiber towel and just wipe it off. Let me just move on to the next bit. We did a test panel. Um, I always do a test panel before starting a detail on a car, um, just so I can get a gauge of what is needed to be done to get the most out of the paint. Now normally, my first step would be to use our polishing pad with a compound, just as a nice, easy, soft touch as in, uh, a start to, on the paint. Um, but that wasn't enough to get the heavy swirls and scratches out, so I, I went to the, the burgundy cutting disc, which is a nice step up. Now this one's obviously it's a bit firmer than the polishing pad, it's got a bit more backbone to it, and I found that priming the pad with the compound and going at it with our DA machine was the easiest way of getting the swirls out without constantly battering the paint and keep going at it. So yeah, so using that combination of the Ultimate Compound and burgundy disc is going to get this swirl free nice and quick. So before we get started on the car, what I like to do is prep my pad. So, <clears throat> As you can see, it's pretty hard. Um, it's a foam cutting disc, that's what they are. So what I like to do to open up the pores of the foam is scrunch it up, beat it up. What this does, it kind of takes the edge off a little bit and it opens up the fibers so it can absorb more compound and keep cutting. And that won't take away any of its cutting ability. Not it's at all. It's softening the pores up exactly so it that. absorbs more product. Exactly that. Like I say, you only do this the once at the start of a detail. Like I say, it's kind of a ritual that I've kind of got myself into, but I find it just absorbs way more product. It means I can have longer buffing cycles. So, now the pad is nice and soft. 
I want to prime the pad with the compound. Now I don't use water or detailer to, to prime the pad, I use the product itself. This way it keeps the pad cool, we don't have any exposed foam rubbing on the paintwork and it means that I can do longer buffing cycles to get a really nice finish on the paint. I'm going to get our ultimate compound, which as you know is our kind of hero product, well it is a hero product. Um, it contains chemical cleaners to brighten dull faded colours, but it also has the mechanical compounds to revive paint and remove our scratches and swells. Just going to use a spreader to feed it into the pad because I don't want any exposed foam rubbing on the paintwork because I don't want to put more swells on the paint. Now I only ever do this at the start of a detail. If you get halfway around the car and you want to use a new pad then obviously you'd, you'd repeat this process but I tend to find that this pad now will last me for the detail. Each section that I want to work, I'm just going to do five little dots. Now you can do a cross, you can do a happy face and a happy face. I just like doing five dots. So, cables over my shoulder. This way it's not going to rub on paintwork and cause more work for me. I'm going to stamp out the work area that I want to work. Now, when it comes to compounding, reducing your work area will get the better finish, solely because you're not spreading the machine too much around. You can concentrate on the smaller areas. So like we primed the pad, I want to prime the surface. So I'm going to set the speed to the lowest on the machine, which is 30. I'm going to pull the trigger and quickly just spread the product. Now, the important thing to mention is we're not taping up plastics um, solely because you don't need to with our products. They're all plastic friendly. If, you, if you're not confident about um, machine polishing the car and, and if you're not sure if you're going to catch the plastics, feel free to, to mask them up. That's not a problem at all. Um, but I've spent far too much time in this bay and, and, I, and I know that the products are not going to mark the plastics. It's going to wipe straight off. So if you don't want to, you don't have to. But if you want to, it's not a problem. Good thing about machine, it gives you the speeds for exactly the job that you want to do. So I want to do swell and defect removal. 4858. Now my go-to is slap bang in the middle of those. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two passes. I'm going to go across the panel, then up and down. So I call this hashtag polishing. It's just a nice regimented way of seeing where the machine has been and getting a nicer even spread of product. Before you get going with the machine, it is really important to relax and chill out. Um, it is a big car, we've got a lot to detail, so the more relaxed you are, the less impact machining is going to have on your body. Um, so holding the machine nice and chilled. You don't need to hold them tight like you're on a roller coaster. Nice relaxed, relaxed grip, enough to keep the pad nice and flat. Now, now the product is spread, I'm going to pull the trigger, push the button in, and slowly go over the panel. is I started and stopped the machine on the panel. This way I'm not spreading product and causing more work for myself and clean up time. And also, you see this ridge here. Whenever you've got a ridge like this in the paint, always work up to it, never over it. That's because that's by far the least amount of paint on the car. So if you just go up to it on either side, it's gonna detail that edge um, without you having to physically go over it. Whenever you do compound, if you if you are left with a bit of a cloudy haze, that's fine. The um, compound will most of the time will leave a cloudy haze. That's why you then move on to your polishing stage to refine the paint. So at this point, we're just reviving. 
The next step with the polish is when we're going to refine and get that real enhancements of gloss and clarity of paint. When detailing a car, it's understanding that not every panel is going to be the same. Now, we started on this side, and even moving across to the other side of the bonnet, we've been noticing a few things that we saw at the start that we thought we would wait until we got to this side to address with you guys. Now, you see, we've got these little kind of patches here. Now, understanding that it's quite old paint, there's a lot of, there's a fair few kind of signs of age de uh, defects that are in the paint. Now, these these patches here are kind of, I don't know what they are. I don't know if it's thin lacquer. I don't know if it's a quick blow-in that someone's used or anything like that. Now, if you're never sure about an area of the car, just don't work on it. What we're gonna be doing is, we're gonna be working around these, just because I'm not 100% sure on what's gonna happen if I do go over with a compound on the pad. Um, we're just gonna use some gentle approaches to make the areas look as good as possible. But it just shows you that, you know, not every panel's the same. Even half the panel of this was completely different one side to the other. Uh, it's just being cautious and, and just knowing when, when's enough is enough. You know, it's making the best of what we have. Position myself. So, we've revived the paint using the compound. Now I want to start refining it using our ultimate polish. Now, we're going to step it down to a yellow polishing pad. So this is super soft, so I don't have to do my scrunchy uh, beaty uppy thing. Um, but what I will do is still prime it because it's still a working product. We're still going to do a few passes with this because we really want to enhance the gloss and refine that finish. So, again, I'm going to shake up the pot bottle, apply it to the pad. Now the biggest thing with po polishing and compounding is taking it off straight away. It's not a wax. So once you've worked an area with a polish, take it straight off. Don't, don't let it cure like a wax. It's not going to do anything wrong for the paint. It's just going to become a bit tougher to take off. And we want to save a bit of time. We want to get, we want to get a better finish rather than just slaving over the product. So we were talking about the hazing earlier um, that you get from compound. You don't always get it, but if you do, this polish can really re refine that finish and get the real enhancement of gloss. Now we mentioned earlier about expanding work surface area. So when I was compounding, I did this section here on its own. But when I'm polishing, I can move it up to doing this whole section on its own. It's all because we're not overworking the surface. So again, cables over my shoulder. I'm gonna stamp out the area I want to work. I'm gonna set the speed to the slow sun machine and spread. Again, I'm not worried if it goes on the plastics, it's just gonna wipe straight off. So, as you can see here, we've done with the swirl and defect removal, we now wanna move on to the waxing and polishing between 3.8 and 4.8. So like before, I'm gonna go slap bang in the middle of those two, those two settings. I'm still gonna do my hashtag, but because the machine is moving slower, I can move quicker. Because we're not overworking the surface, we're backing off. We're now just kind of gently massaging the surface. So, my, my arm movements are gonna be a bit quicker because the machine is moving slower. So again, no pressure on the machine, just enough to keep it nice and flat, and away we go. procedure change your towel so for compounding I was using the Supreme Charm microfiber towel because I don't want to keep spreading compound and oily products on the surface I've now moved on to our finishing towel which is a fresh clean towel again take it straight off Detail face. <laughs> so, for, for the eagle eye viewers and people like myself that are obsessed with detailing and paint, um, you'll notice that we do have some spots in the paint like this. Now, unfortunately, these are underneath the clear coat. It's a chemical reaction. There's nothing we can physically do about that um, to remove them. So what we're doing is making the most of what we can do. So that's removing the scratches and swirls. Now, in our bay, it's very magnified and you see a lot more than you would outside. So if you can get it looking, you know, 70, 80% in the bay, outside it's gonna look stunning. So if you do see stuff like this, and you know, you're working at the surface and you just can't take them out, unfortunately, it might be under the paint. There's nothing you can do about it. Now, with older paints, 
we don't know the history of the painting, we don't know who's painted it or if someone, you know, if it was like from the factory. Um, but what we're doing is what we can do, and that's removing the scratches and swells. So, we've revived the paint using the compound and the burgundy pad. We've refined it using the yellow pad and the ultimate polish. Now we're going to be hand waxing. So we've, we've put the gloss in there, we've enhanced the paint, now we want to protect it. So we're going to be using the ultimate paste wax. This does come in a liquid form as well if you want to use the liquid um, with a machine or by hand, that's fine. The paste and liquid both perform in the same exact way. Myself, I like to use a paste wax, I kind of like that kind of hand finish using a paste wax. So, what we'll do, nice clean pad. I'm going to pinch the top of the pad like this, place it on the wax. Now, all I'm going to do is turn it half a turn. This is going to prime the pad, which means that we can cover a nice work surface area without having to top it up. Now, only ever top up the pad when you start seeing gaps in the wax. Don't move on to the next panel and think, I need to top up the pad. You don't want to overload the surface with too much wax. You want to barely see it on the surface. Each process, we've been priming the pad or priming the surface. We're going to do exactly the same with the wax. So I'm going to draw three lines. You'll notice that I've expanded the work surface area again. So I can do this whole section now in one pass. That's not a problem. Now because I put these three lines in, when I go over get over it with the pad, it's going to top it up, which means we're going to get a nice even spread of wax. No pressure on the pad, just a few fingers to keep it nice and flat, nice tight circles, and as you can see you should barely see it on the surface. So the reason I've gone for the ultimate wax is because it's a fully synthetic wax, which means it hazes to a, to a clear. Now this means if you've got a dark metallic, um, or any metallic in general, the, the synthetic wax will make that fleck underneath pop. On the flip side, if you have a dark car, it'll give it that real nice wet look. That's the reason I'm using the fully synthetic ultimate wax on this paint. <laughs> wax is the only product we're going to let dry on the surface. This is so it can really bond to the paint and give itself some give itself some protection, give the paint some real good protection. Previously on the compounding polishing, we've removed them straight away. With the wax, we're going to let it cure. A common question we get is, how long does the wax take to cure? Unfortunately, it's a bit of a how long is a piece of string scenario. It depends on the humidity, the temperature of the day. Um, but what I tend to find is if I start at the bonnet, <coughs> work myself around the car, by the time I get back to the bonnet, it's normally time to take off. But if you're ever unsure, just swipe the surface. If that swipe is greasy like that, it means it's not ready to come off yet. If it's clear, it means it's really, it's all good, it's fully cured and ready to come off. And always make sure, again, different process, different towels. So this is a fresh, clean finishing towel to remove that wax. So, my final touch uh, for any kind of paint preparation or show prep <coughs> will always be the, using the ultimate detail. Now this, as much as it does boost the gloss, it also makes sure you get a nice streak free finish and remove any kind of leftover residues from the wax. So it's just a great finishing touch for any kind of paint preparation or show prep on the car. And also when you're at a car show as well, uh, especially if it's an indoor one, you can go around with a detailer to make sure you get those fingerprints like dust off there and also just really boost the gloss um, and enhance the protection. So now we've gone through the processes of what we're going to be doing on the car, I'm going to crack on. Um, I've got a full day ahead of making sure the whole car looks exactly like the, the other side of the bonnet does. So I'm going to crack on with that and let Patrick do whatever he's doing. Thanks.